You're welcome back to Morning Express. Now to continuing our discussion, we've been joined by an economist and a public affairs analyst, Mr. Adefolarin Olamilekon, who is a regular on the program. Hello and good morning. It's wonderful to have you in the studio with us. Thanks for having me. And again, for part of my introduction, I'm a political economist. A political economist. Yes, because there is a little bit different between core mainstream economists and political economists. All right, that's 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 well noted. <laughs> so 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 let me let me take that again. Exactly. Mr. Defolarin Olamilekon, a an economic or political analyst. Okay. Political economy. Political economy. Exactly. All right. That's that's fantastic. It's good to have you in the studio. It's been a minute. Exactly. Uh, well, let's uh, set the ball rolling. Mm. River State is on fire, mm. literally and mm. figuratively. Mm. About three local government council secretariats have been set ablaze by thugs. Exactly. There's a lot of tension, mm. both on the side of the governor and on the side of the, um, you know, godfather of the state, mm. which is Barry Senior Sumwiki, the mm. current FCT minister. Mm. This has also resulted in the president even wading into the situation. Exactly. How would you react to the really unfortunate situation in River State? Uh, we foresee this happening. I think on this show, me, you, Pito, we have highlighted issues around the River State election, particularly the local government election that is coming. Even before the local government election came into being, we have dissected the issues around the Godfather son issue between Wiki and Pogara, particularly. Yes. Uh, the rigmarole, attention, and uh, out of anxiety, anger, creative because of the bad blood policies that that, that, that came up between Wiki yes. and Fubara. And uh, before then, we also highlighted that uh, in, in Nigeria, when a godfather and a godson is fighting as a result of that political difference, we should expect uh, the, 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 the people of the state suffering from the effect of that fight. And that's what we are seeing in, in, uh, in River State as we speak right now. So many of us are analysts particularly from the political economy angle. And I, since on Saturday, I begin to review river state crisis from the angle of political economy, particularly who control the instrument of power in river state. That has been the major bulk of challenge. Who control the instrument of power? Is it godfather or the son? And when the election comes, we also see the game that the godson play by bringing an unknown party to limelight in river state. Although he broke them in, then is pro member is pro PDP supporters swing into that unknown party and that is what we see on Saturday that majority of the people that were elected under the APP or any other party that won the election were pro Kubara boys who left PDP and come into those parties. So what we are seeing in River State is not new. It has always happened. Most of us could remember Kwara State some years back. Yes. Most of us could also re remember the likes of uh, uh, emo state like where there was a where, where there was a mass defection exactly. to a political party exactly. that seemed a bit inconsequential at first but mm. then they utilized that, uh, that to, to to be able to grab to, the to seat. grab the seat of power and the thing is they now the political party they, i'm just uh, like, like, laugh, laughing at the people who control app it's just the money that they, they will get they are interested in the main power still rests with the governor yes the main power still rests with the pdp that is just it. Because what they have played out is they played the intrigues that will help them to sustain the power outside the Godfather uh, 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 syndrome. Yes. You get it? Yes. So what the Fubara have done is that he used the instrumentality of APP to bring power to PDP in a way that he cannot have a full control of the people who are the local government chairman. And if you could remember that when they want the chairman that uh, Wiki left, we have sent packing. So he also want to have his own men holding control of the local government so that he can give them instruction and majorly, majorly, because of the fund of local government, because we must tell ourselves the truth. Why are governors so 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 I dreaded about local government? It's because of the fund that is coming. And this is what has displayed. So what is happening in River State today is not new. Either they are burning local government, either they are burning police van. Police van van has been born no state that police van have never been born in Nigeria in time there is crisis. No state that local government council have not been born before. Now, now, now mind you, this development mm. came immediately, less than 24 hours after the IGP, mm. Agbetoku, asked the you know police personnel manning the secretariat mm. to vacate the secretariat. Mm. And then talks took over, took the opportunity to commit arson. Mm. Do you think that perhaps there should be someone held accountable or responsible for these heinous acts? Mm. Apart from the talks, I mean, they are only working 
or they could have only done this based on the instructions of someone somewhere. Mm. Who do you think is most likely behind this? I won't be, I won't be trying as much as to defend the police, but I also want to be very, very critical about the issue. Is it the only police that will be protecting local government sector? Is it the only police that was there? NFCDC is there. Nigerian Security and GSS was there. The soldiers were there. So why, why are we pointing at using figures that, uh, as alleged by most media newspaper that uh, the police withdraw their men? And the IG have not told us anything whether they withdraw any men or anything. It has not been established whether police. If police withdraw their personnel, how come they now burn police vehicles? We must ask ourselves that question. And the issue is that anytime this kind of crisis comes within political actors, top elite political actors in Nigeria, the police always be the whipping boys. And I won't, I won't blame the, uh, the, the elite political actors because the police is an instrument in their hand. So they use it at any point in time the way they wish. So if the police is receiving the backlash that, okay, the, the IG withdraw his men from the sectarian, that's why it was born, people could agree to that. But on my own, I also need to critically look at that. Is it true that the policemen withdrew from those places? Because if true they withdraw from those places, what about other security agencies? Where are they? What are I, they I, doing? I mean, this this is a statement mm. that came from the IGP himself. Mm. It wasn't a hearsay. Mm. It wasn't a rumor. It mm. wasn't a gossip. Mm. The IGP stated that he gave the command for them to vacate this secretariat. Now, the big question, I mm. believe, is on the minds mm. of many Nigerians is... Why we draw personnel at a sport or from a sport during a time when the policy is still very heated in the state? But you could also remember that underneath his statement was that according to court judgment. judgment. And we ask ourselves, which court would give you the, 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 the power that you should withdraw your men in time of crisis? For me, I, I don't want us to just accept that, okay, they will draw them. Because there are other security personnel that there that could also provide security for the sectariat. So we should also throw our lens at other security agencies. Does it mean that the, all, the chief of army also withdraw his soldiers? Does it mean that the commandant general of uh, civil defense also withdraw his soldiers? Does it mean that the director general of GSA also withdraw his men from the... Because in that sectariat that you see, few kilometers, few, I mean, few meters away from there, you will see the GSS office. Yes. From each of those local government uh, uh, sectariat that were born. So how come those other ones were looking a wolf and talk over around them and go and, and go and burn the sectarian because for me it is not just let us not just pinpoint the accusation of that police could be all responsible let us also telegraph and bring out other security agencies that are supposed to provide security for nigerians in those local government sector because they're all culprit if you want to judge by what has happened all of them the police the army the gss the security the civil defense could also be held responsible for what has happened in those three local governments, not just the police alone. Now, now, a statement by the president this morning says that he's warning angry parties, mm. you know, against seeking for self-help, mm. asking them to instead go to court mm. to contest the outcome, outcome mm. of the election. Definitely, it's yeah. expected. It's expected that anybody that is angry with any election result should go to court and contest about uh, whether he win or he lost. But, but that is in the situation he, on ground now. It will, never, it will never be that easy. That is in the situation <laughs> on ground. <laughs> exactly. So, so they, they are doing a totally different thing. I mean, it's it's been only, it's been just a few days after mm -hmm. the election mm -hmm. and we're seeing such huge escalation mm -hmm. in the state. Mm -hmm. Do you see the possibility of perhaps them seeking redress in a proper way by going to court as advised by the president or are we going to continue seeing a recurrence of security that's been burnt and maybe a de-escalation of peace in the state. Definitely it could happen. But the first question we ask ourselves, this goes because an election uh, result that is really contended at this point in time. It's a political party against political party that are fighting over the spoil of election. Now, we ask ourselves, it's a, it's a local government election. Who goes to constitute the local government election tribunal? Because going to court means that people have to set up a tribunal. Is it federal government that will set up the tribunal? Is it the state government that will set up the tribunal? Now, even if federal government sort of the tribunal and it will swing the other way that the opposition party that lost the election should be given all the 31 or 21 local government that they lost. Yes. It will be like, ah, federal government have done what? Have not given justice. If the state governor should, government should now say, okay, let us set up an electoral tribunal for local government election. And they say, no, the people that have won, have really won, nobody should fight them anymore. Then they will say, no, ah, it is because they belong to the uh, state government. That's why the, the tribunal said they should 
they should not uh, hand over the power to anybody again. So one thing I want to point out in this issue of reverse is that we already know that this will happen. Since the two parties fail to adhere to the advice of the president, if you remember about six, seven months ago, the president advised them, brought the two of the two parties together and advised them on what to do. And all of us believed, okay, peace has returned to that political camp. But all of a sudden, things went wide again. And you could understand why it went wide. The governor, as we speak today, has gotten all that godfather behind him. As against the one is, that is, is that a fact? It's a fact. The people who are making it easy for Fubara as an elected governor to continue to be so strong and fight his godfather is because he has gotten that godfather behind him. The former governor of the state is behind him. All the elders in the state behind him. There was a particular uh, program he held. All the traditional elders. Now, in the now state. Don't, don't, don't you think that perhaps mm. this continuous call for mm. an end to godfatherism mm. in the Nigerian political space, which has marred the progress of the democracy as mm. we know it, mm. is what Fubara is trying to push? Is the agenda that Governor Fubara, alongside other elder statesmen in River State, mm. are trying to push in order to maybe make Wiki let's go of his strong grip on and, the and, and the question is, is it true that, is it factual that Wiki is the one even pushing for the destruction in the state? Because we also... No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. This, uh, we, we, are not, we are not saying he's pushing for the destruction. Because that is my what, statement, that is My statement was, mm -hmm. my statement mm -hmm. was, he has a strong grip on River State. Mm -hmm. Even after leaving office, as a former governor, mm. he's now serving as FCT minister. Mm -hmm. Yet, reports that we see every day, news that we read on, on tabloids and mm -hmm. newspapers every day, always points to the fact that Wiki, Barristan Yosun Wiki, still has a strong grip and still wants to control the affairs of the state. You know which, why is he, why, he, which is why there he, is a rift between him and the governor. You know why it happens that way? If you understand Nigerian politics, right from a modest history of Nigerian politics, particularly party politics in Nigeria, you understand when a strong man comes up, as a governor, as a president, he has people who are his hardcore loyalists. He plays them in choice offices. He plays them in choice uh, 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 positions. Now, if he exceeds and bring a new person to succeed him, what he expected was that the, the current status of what he has created should be maintained. But when a new person now comes in and dislodge all his loyalists and bring his own loyalists, that's where the problem starts. Now, that, now, isn't that the same situation or a reverse of mm -hmm. the situation that we are seeing in Koji State, mm -hmm. where the governor mm -hmm. is sort of shielding mm -hmm. the ex-governor, mm -hmm. Yaya Bello, exactly. from EFCC's uh, investigation over his alleged billions of naira, you know, um, of fraud? Exactly. In this situation... Mm. Would you rather have Fubara act the same way Ododo did in Kogi State and River State? The question we ask ourselves, when he was being appointed and anointed to be a governor under his godfather, what was the agreement? You and I were not there. So whatever agreement they had is between both of them. And one of the things that we have seen is that he has this, he has, he has this, he has this day or declare one of the agreements null and void. What, what, was what, what, what was the agreement? Appointment. The people that was appointed under him, commissioners, state house of assembly, local government chairman, these are the people that were placed all around him to work with him. Even if it is first time, even if it is two years, but all of a sudden, he dislodged all of them. Now, what do you think will happen to the Godfather? Meanwhile, there is an agreement because there is no way you can go into you can go into that such position with who. And if you remember. During the River State PDP election, uh, governorship election, there was no nobody that contest against him. What it means is that, in as much as people have stepped down for you, you must also find something for them to be doing. But because of the greed in our system, everybody will always come with his own greed. It is also the greed that made them uh, wicked to appoint him or uh, nominate him as the sole candidate of PDP. Now, the same greed has now come into for by himself to now say, okay, now that this what you have done, so, then so, so, do so, so now you are insinuating, mm -hmm. or you are of the opinion mm -hmm. that across board mm -hmm. there is greed. There is greed, both from from the quarters the, of Wiki and, and the quarters of the, of exactly, the governor of Fubara. Exactly, and the greed is as a result of I don't want him, to, I don't want to be controlled, and I don't want people to be a spy under me. If but, you but but isn't that what politics is all about? 
That's why we are both of us are now coming to the same table. Now. All right. In the sense, if you come, if you understand Nigerian politics, right from 1999, when Godfatherism became one of the beckon of bastardizing our democracy, when well, many of us spoke about it, but a lot of people say, no, 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 I lie, no, no, it's one of the best ones because it allowed for continuity. It was continuity that was one of the beckon that Bivanse was open. But guess what? When Fubeba and I came in. He now started doing other projects, other programs, as against the continuity that he, we can hope to continue. Particularly, the stomach infrastructure for members of PDP. There, the there, there's, there's something Governor Fubara has mm. always reiterated, especially mm. in the news or anytime he has an opportunity to speak about his feud with his boss, mm. or as he calls him, his ogre, mm. Barry Senyerson Wiki. Mm. He has always said, you can't be a, a minister in the FCT, mm a position that is tantamount to a governor now. Mm -hmm. You can't be a governor in the FCT mm -hmm. and a governor in River State at the same time. Mm -hmm. You can't govern two states at the same time. And that's perhaps what uh, Wiki is trying to do. I, I, M many people would agree that that's that, what he's trying to do. Definitely. That, that's why people would definitely would agree on to that. But the bottom line is this. Nigerian politics, particularly party politics, have been turned upside down in a way that it is the Members of being a member of political party are that choice level, at that elite level that guarantee your mail ticket daily. And that mail ticket for that mail ticket to be guaranteed, you must be in a position of authority. You, you said something about stomach infrastructure. How, <laughs> how, how, how did we degenerate in, mm. in, in terms of our politics to mm. a point where stomach infrastructure is now a huge topic of debate mm. for whoever gets into power? The issue about stomach infrastructure from political economy less is about the economic determination of every human survivor. Yes. Who survive by eating, drinking, living very well, having a house. Isn't survive. the governor providing that? In a way of providing for the generality of the people. Now we are talking about so so, 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 so hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. You are talking about providing the stomach infrastructure for weakest people hmm. and not necessarily for the generality of the reverse people. Is that where you are driving at? No. It comes this way. You know, I, I establish I say party politics in Nigeria. Okay. Being a member of a political party at the elite choice level, guarantee your mail ticket. Mail ticket comes in appointment. Mail ticket comes as a board of member of directors of a government institution. Mail ticket comes to recruitment facilitation. Mail ticket comes to contract. These are the things that will be given to people who have been... And there was an agreement prior to Fubara becoming governor. Definitely. That will be established. Nobody will have a godfather that will not have an agreement on when you are put in a position. Now, yes. now Ade Folare, mm. let me just get your take mm. on this. Mm. You are live on television. Definitely. What is your position on Godfatherism in Nigeria? It's deadly. It's evil. It has dragged back development. You know how it drives back development. Contract will become splitting contract. Contract will be given and it will never be completed. We have experienced it across Nigeria. In FCTA, we alone, we experienced contract splitting, that government give contract to people as a result of the affiliation to the party, and it was never done. In River State, it will be the same thing. In NEDC, that's supposed to be taking care of development in, in the Niger Delta communities, what has happened because of contract splitting. And what, that's one of the danger of Godfatherism. Because yes. once a Godfather appoints someone or nominates someone into a position, what happens is that it gives give, give you people you'll be working with. And those people will be giving a feedback report. And those people will be his eyes on the government and in front of the government. So what has really happened in River State is that the people that Wiki are going to be the eyes, his own eyes in River State, over the resources of River State, have been taken out. And we will forever go down appointing new people who will now be making report to him. So this is a Wiki to hear about billions coming to River State uh, coffer. It is Fubara that knows what comes in and what goes out. It is Fubara that appoints people who get contract there, contract there, contract there. When Wiki was there as governor, I mean, we didn't see the choice of com a company that was giving contract to. Now, it has all changed. A new set of companies have come with proposal and the rest of the design and the rest of the They are the ones getting the contract. Why do you think they go and, they, why wouldn't they go and burn a uh, secretariat? Why do you think that you go and pick on unknown political party? Not even Labour Party that is well known. That had a good outing in River State to come and contest local government. He went and picked on no party to come and contest as against PDP. Meanwhile, he pushed all the pro Fubara PDP members into that political party. I've never seen one of those uh, small, small party organizing rally that will be inviting big national television stations. But this particular APP brought in channels, allies, 
another bigger television But, but mind you, Adefo mm -hmm. if you remember the crisis that led up to these mm -hmm. local government polls, mm -hmm. the internal crisis that rocked the People's Democratic Party, mm -hmm. not just nationally, mm -hmm. but in River State, mm -hmm. where there was a, a Wiki faction mm -hmm. and a Fubara faction. Mm -hmm. And remember that just before the elections, a few days before the elections, mm -hmm. the Wiki faction said elections will not hold anywhere in the state. This was a this was a real threat. Uh -huh. It was an open threat, mm -hmm. and they meant to go ahead with that until the IGP stepped in and deployed exactly. deployed boots to the state. Exactly. If they had not moved to the APP, mm. don't you think that would have mad the possibility of these chairman elect winning the seats? The issue is this: the pro PDP that moved to APP, who are they? PDP members. But not as popular, not as loyalist to the main PDP man in Abuja, Wiki. You must understand this particular intrigues around the PDP. PDP was having issue at the national. PDP also created problem at the state. And if you remember the 27 lawmaker that said they are defected to APC. Now, now when, 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 you, when you talk about loyalty, mm -hmm. uh, Defo Lara, when mm -hmm. you talk about loyalty in politics, mm -hmm. uh, Wiki is in Abuja. Yes. Governor Simfubara is in River State. Yes. He has just spent about one year in office. Definitely. He has about three years to go. Exactly. How do you think these local government chairman would want to tilt towards the Wiki part, party mm. and not really towards Fubara, who is going to be in power mm. for the next three years? That will happen. You know why it will happen? Because he gave them the opportunity. Even the APP that, that, that he brought into power, did they even conduct uh, local government chairman uh, nomination primaries, prim uh, primaries? They didn't conduct. They just appointed people here and there for councillors and chairman. What we are trying to point out is that both of them are looking for loyalists. Yes. And if you want to have loyalists, you must feed them. You must maintain them. So how do you maintain loyalists? You put them in church position to occupy position in the state and also be earning the allowances, salaries, and the rest of them. But now, the one that we can vote for him to work with, he pushed them out. So are they coming to come to Abuja to come and be seeking for a position in FCT? It is the university they came from. So it is that same place they will go back and collect their position. Is it is it a right? Is, is, I mean, is it a right to have the position? It's, they are Nigerians. It's, 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 no, no, they are Nigerians, but it's politics. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's exactly. an election. Mm -hmm. Anybody, anybody, irrespective of party exactly. uh, differences, Different irrespective thing. of uh, uh, irrespective of uh, lo loyalty, exactly. loyalty to mm -hmm. a godfather, godfather or affiliation, exactly. can contest and you know, win an election or mm. lose an election mm. as enshrined in the constitution. Exactly. Now, you, you make it seem like these people that, you know, were part of the weaker faction of mm. PDP in River State were disenfranchised of what rightfully belonged to them. Mm. It's an election. It's an election. But you ask yourself, in the election, who and who came out to vote? Look at government election and the bastard that we must establish it. Nobody go out to go. Election will be coming up in Nassau State in a few days' time. Yes. Election have been conducted in different states. I mean people go out, even people people who go out to contest uh, vote in that election are party members who are very sure that they are going to win. So people don't go out to go and strain their neck for an election that do that. The governor will declare I've already made preparation with now, 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 now let's let's take another another state as mm. a case study. Mm. In our state. Mm -hmm. uh, PDP flawed 30 out of the 31 local government uh, areas exactly. in the state. Mm. And APC narrowly escaped with one. Mm. And mind you, uh, the governor in, in, in Akwa Ibom State is a PDP man. Exactly. The Senate president, Senator Gotsu Lekwabio, mm. is an APC man. Mm. And he is from Akwa Ibom State. He's mm. considered the godfather of politics in, in Akwa Ibom State. Exactly. Now, do you think that if the Senate president had reacted the same way Wiki is reacting to the situation in Rivers, they would have been, there wouldn't have been some sort of de-escalation of peace in, in Akwa Ibom State. There's, there's a deeper understanding of Akwa Ibom politics. And more what is different from Akwa Ibom and River State? What is different remains when President Governor of Akwa Ibom State was to be nominated as a PDP candidate. Was there opposition? If you could also remember that this person has also worked with the current Senate President before. He worked with uh, the, last, uh, the former governor Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel, he worked with him. Yes. And when it comes to party nomination, he worked with him and everything went smoothly. There was already an agreement. And if you remember, Akwa Ibom politics is quite different from reverse politics. Akwa Ibom is built on continuity in governance. Right from when Victor Atta was the governor to 
Sonny President, because of Pabio, then to Emmanuel, now to Pasteno. It has only been continuity. They have a master plan. They, they are just like Lagos. That's the 25 years. Now, they, they, Lagos is trying to uh, uh, design the master plan to about 50 to 100 years. That was the same master plan that Akwaibon had. And you also remember, at the point when Victor Atta was the governor of Akwaibon, Akwaibon was not that too buoyant when it comes to financial resources. But when Senate President became governor, the buoyancy came with a lot of financial resources. And that helped. So Akwaibon has a lot of money they can use for development that project. And that continuity has been staple on ground. No matter how political difference you will be, you must continue with that continuity. And that's what I've shown. But in terms of the political difference, you can also see that because of lack of understanding, they could not, nobody could go and tamper with uh, the result of uh, the Senate president local government. Because the choice of the local government chairman candidate was the choice of the people. You get it? And that happened, and that's why we have peaceful local government election. It is not just local government chairman alone that they won. They also had councillors that also won in different political parties. But what I'm trying to point out is the understanding of politics in these two states are different. Agreement is agreement. And in Akwai Bon says that following the agreement, when Senator Akwai was leaving, who did he brought that governor? Emmanuel. And, yeah. and, and throughout that period, there was peace. But not until maybe the second part of his uh, second time that they begin to have a little bit of disagreement and the rest of them. But you can see now the peace has continued and the understanding has also waved everybody into shape. But in Emmanuel State, it has not happened because there are a lot of voices, there are a lot of uh, uh, different advices coming in. And again, you should also remember that this is the first time a, <coughs> a reverend man will be a governor in a state. And who can make it happen? When Adi, as against the opposition of others, who say, no, 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 don't give it to a reverend man. But he made it happen. But as you speak right now, it has now become a challenge. But what I'm trying to point out is that most of us are against Godfatherism. Godfatherism could be healthy for the politics. But in Nigeria, Godfatherism has become a challenge. In developing climate, there are Godfather in politics who make sure that people that have nurtured, mentor, can be pushed. The George family in the US for today, they mentor their children. Governors, president. In the new, the, the latest George family son now, is preparing to be governor in the next 10 years or 8 years to come. So you mentor them, you pull them through, you show them the ideology of the state and the party. Chief Abofem Ewolo was a mentor to several Nigerians in different calibers. Nigerian politicians. Politics. So you could also understand that Godfatherism could be healthy. But in this case, where the Godfatherism is evil. And it started in 1999, especially in 2007, when we have a new crop of governor who took over power. Their own Godfatherism was barbaric. And we must put an end to it. But I can say here that Godfatherism could be healthy for our politics if the right thing is done, if agreement could be followed. And that agreement should not be agreement for just one person, but agreement for the development of the state and for the welfare of the people. Now, now I believe many people will be wondering about the legality of two things. Mm. One, these agreements that you have, you know, s continuously mm -hmm. called on <laughs> in terms of succeeds in, exactly. in, in uh, governorship seats exactly. in states. Mm. That is one. How legal is it? Secondly, the mass defection from PDP to APP mm. by most chairmanship aspirants mm -hmm. just before the elections mm -hmm. in River State, you know, that uh, prompted this mass win exactly. for APP, mm. which indirectly was a win for the uh, uh, Fubara uh, faction of PDP. the PDP. Exactly. How legal are these two things? Now, let's, let's start off with these agreements, the stomach infrastructure agreements <laughs> that you have, you have always called on. Because it's very important we stress this. Most Nigerians who belong to political party, man, yes. that's what they wait for. You can't be a political party member for free. Something must come to you. Yes. You get it. Either at the world level, either at the local government level, either at the state level, either at the national level, either at the zone level. Something must come to you. Why do you think that people are accusing President Tunubu for not appointing them into board of directors of some of these choice government is because there was an agreement. Because there was an agreement. Why do you think that when you work for a political party, they accuse you? Just recently, President Tunubu appointed somebody from your state who was a former, who was a PDP some six months ago. And he appointed him into one big position. And all the APC people say, shout, ah, this man, just a few months ago was in the PDP. How come you are giving him a position? The people who are shouting why you are giving him a position know that they are work for the party. They struggle, they sweat, they spend their money for the party. How come they are not getting returned? Because political party in Nigeria, as I earlier pointed, is like a mail ticket. 
Once you're a member of a political party, at that elite choice level, you have spent your money, you have exerted your energy, you expect something in return. Why do you think that everybody waiting and they are running to the chief of staff, put our name in list of appointees, put our name in list of this and that? Because they know that something will come. So when that thing doesn't did not come at the right time, or is not coming at all, they get angry. But when you now put some people in a particular position, somebody now come and say because now the chairman, the DG of that organization, I want to push everybody out. It becomes a challenge, you create a problem for yourself. And that's why the argument, although the agreement may not be signed, seen by any court of law, but the agreement could be verbal, but the agreement could also be in the the, the subsector or sub clause of the condition of the, of a political party. That our members should be appointed into choice position. And when they are appointed into choice position, they should be allowed to to, to, to do their work. But when that become a challenge, it becomes a challenge to the entire party. Why do you think that PDP is in a disarray today? It is because the people who are governors of the state are not ready to push their money into PDP. We must tell ourselves the truth. Because the money they realized in 2023 elections, nobody could get that account for it. Now, all the other PDP members across Nigeria are now looking onto the governor for contract, they're looking onto the governor for recruitment. Looking at, so how would the governor, when he has little fun to expand on development in the state? So that's why it is a challenge. So when it happens that way that they have already appointed people into a particular position, then another person now comes as the head, they yes. push them out. It becomes a challenge to the political party. Then they will not be to ask your question. How are we going to get money to fund the party? How are we going to pay our monthly dues? How are we going to take care of our members? That's where the problem is. That's when I mentioned in, uh, uh, stomach infrastructure. That is the line of stomach infrastructure. Dues to be paid to the political party, funding of the political party, organizing program, carrying out first statement address of them. Where would the money come from? So it's safe to say that Fubara came and destabilized an entire system that Wiki had set up. That is just when they say they destabilized the grassroots of uh, uh, Wiki politi Politics Foundation. What do you think they are talking about? It is the people that place. The two, do you remember when Wiki was in government? How many special assistants did they have? Over 200 and something of them. And he was paying their salaries. They are no more available because there is no money. Kubala have worked dislodged them. Even though it is considered to be a dis, uh, dis disservice to the state because that is the state fund money that's supposed to go to some development program, uh, programs on the state. But for the political parties, they believe that will also help them to aid the economy. If you remember, there was this discussion around PDP that when PDP was in power in 2015 and uh, before 2015, they normally organize rally, 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 rally. And people ask, why are you people organizing rally, rally here and there? You want to do small program, you gather all the media, you gather journalists. They say, that's another way of giving out money to the people so that economy can flow. And that's how it is in political party too. You must appoint people into position of authority. You must be able to create jobs for them. Then, when you now remove them from that job, they will now go back to how would they feed? How would they take care of themselves and their family? Now, 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 now let's, let's get back to River State mm. now on the issue of the mass defection mm. that took place just before the election. Mm. Uh, a lot of people will be wondering, was it a legal move? Mm. And if yes, how legal was it? Are there any loopholes that perhaps mm. the uh, WK faction of PDP in River State could you know, use to seek redress mm. as the president has asked them to go to court? Definitely. Now, people who are now asking, is there a crisis in PDP? Will not actually know that truly there's crisis in PDP at the state and at the national. Then secondly, I will advise APP. This romance with the PDP will not last. If you enter in River State anyway, it will not last. They will, sooner or later, there will still be another disagreement between APP and Fubara. Because PDP remains its own. PDP remains where it comes from. He is just using them as a, as a vehicle to actualize some of the things. Don't be surprised tomorrow, the moment the water settles, all the chairmen from APP will do the camp. And I will not want to ask whether the APP chairman, whether they are their national chairman or their state chairman will not take them to court. Because now everybody is enjoying the, the luxury, the, the whatever is coming. By the time you, all those APP chairman now that are now elected as chairman in the state, now say, okay, they are decamping to PDP. I want to ask whether the chairman of national chairman of APP or the state chairman of APP will not say they want to take them to court. Because that would always be the language. But now that everything is smooth, everything is going well, they will always enjoy it. But let me just advise that it will not last because they will still go back. Then another thing is that to some it is legal, to some it is not legal. But it is all political intrigues that normally play out. When politicians want to take hold of power, they use any means, they use any method. And they design the method, they implement it, and they wait for the outcome. What we have seen today is a design method or a design process 
by the Fubara camp to implement APP to achieve what they want to do. And they have implemented it, and here is the outcome. They have gotten the local government. So what else will come? But I can assure that for APP, the romance will not last. And don't be surprised tomorrow, all these men will decamp to PDP. And that is just it. Well, well, that's uh, that's quite a very big take there mm -hmm. on uh, the local government polls mm -hmm. uh, that held across three states, mm -hmm. River State, Benue, Benue as well as uh, Akwa Ibom Akwa State. Ibom. Well, let's uh, turn our attention to something else. Mm -hmm. I will uh, take a copy of the Daily Times newspaper greeting your screen this morning, uh, where the president has said that anti-graft war uh, won't be won by technicalities or, or frivolous appeals. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a statement by President Bola Metinubu to the judiciary. It also says that uh, the president has restated federal government's commitment to creating right environment for judicial officers to discharge their responsibilities, as he lists student loan fund consumer credit scheme as federal government's strategic initiatives to curb corruption. Now, let's uh, move away from the Daily Times newspaper and pick up a copy of the Nigerian News Direct, which has a semblance in terms of uh, similarity of the headline. On the front page of the Nigerian News Direct, uh, you'd also find inserted beneath the masthead frivol frivolous appeals, technicalities undermining anti-corruption efforts, says Tinubu, calls for urgent judicial reforms to combat corruption in Nigeria as CGN Kekereko harps on collaboration between judiciary and anti-graft agencies. Mm -hmm. Now, this, is, uh, this has been quite a very big issue mm -hmm. in the country, uh, talking about corruption mm -hmm. and the work that, uh, you know, organizations like EFCC, mm -hmm. like ICPC, mm -hmm. are do like SEC, yeah, exactly. Securities and Exchange yeah, Commission, yeah. are, you know, doing to ensure that, you know, crimes surrounding fraud mm. and, you know, extortion or siphoning government funds are mm. curtailed in the country. However, the president is here saying that all these appeals that people make in court mm. are not helping matters. Mm. How would you react to this uh, statement? I think the president is not far from the truth. Those appeals, you know, delay justice. We also deny justice to be meted out to people that are you know, actually, in fact, as investigation has revealed, they are culprit of what they have done. So the, all those frivolous appeals normally uh, delayed, and to, technically to also like it, it will bring about a broken cord within the justice to be system. That system. So we must be able to address that. And uh, he, he, I think the message should go to the lawyers. A lawyer know when a, a, a client brief you on his case from the day of the briefing, you already know that this person committed that crime. But the lawyers will do everything possible, and. How do they do everything possible? They look at the loopholes in the law. Our laws are not perfect, but they are good. They are not perfect, but they are good. So they look out for the loopholes in the court. And one of the loopholes that they have found in the, in the law is that this technicality, these appeals must always come. These uh, ex party orders issues must always come in. And the abuse of all this technicality also comes in. So the lawyers already know. So whether you, 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 you want to fight that injustice to the end, they will always use these loopholes to also gain what they want. That's why I say that. By the time a court case we expect, a time limit or a time frame we expect, they must have spent so many money, so many time on that particular court cases, and people will be so tired of following up on the court cases. Well, a, a good example is the uh, corruption cases against high flying individuals, or particularly in, in the uh, country, uh, in the country, and particularly exposed individuals. You can discover that the time they will expel on those court cases, people will be tired. Initially, to be like a media trial. Then to go into the real issue before you know people will be fed up, fed out, and you say, oh, we are not even hearing anything about this person anymore." Just last week, a particular governor was give was granted bail of one hundred and fifty million now. Uh, former and, Taraba State Governor Darius, actually, since when Darius has Dixon, this, Ishaku. Since, Ishaku. Yes, since when is this case started? This case has started for a very long time, until now no justice. And this grant they are granting me now, you go and rest. And mind you, the moment the day, the, the moment the court grant uh, meted out justice. His days that are spent in custody will be counted along the days that he's going to spend. Now, now was he, is he really spending those days in custody? I think that, that's, was, that's another big question <laughs> here. That, that's another angle it's to true, it. Are true. they really spending time in custody as prescribed by the court? They are. While, well, waiting, you, well, you while, that, while awaiting trial. <coughs> you know that we have now understood that in our correctional services, in our correctional places, there are special 
Mm. They are VIP section. They are VIP section. So most of these politically exposed individuals don't go to where ordinary Nigerians who are sentenced to prison. Now, 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 now this is this is where the contrast mm. is. Uh, gov former Governor Darius Ishaku mm. was accused of, you know, an alleged about fifteen billion. Uh, 27 billion naira okay. actually because hmm. it's it's here there's a hmm. report here said saying that uh, the figure is about 27 billion naira hmm. many people will be wondering why a 150 million naira bill hmm. over 27 billion naira which hmm. is a very staggering amount of money exactly although although sometimes those bills uh, those bills could be in the quantity of money not necessarily that you are going to give the court the money Depending on how the the, the judge will in in quantity it. of money in what sense in the quantity in that mean the quantity of cash, but will be in relation of money in the sense that could say okay bring somebody in your life some who have this wealth of money who has this wealth of houses who have this wealth of things to show. So it's probably that he did not even or he's not even given the court the one hundred and fifty million. No, 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 in probably assets mm -hmm. or in in shorties. Surety, yes. Other than actually going for the twenty seven, I mean, it's it. Yes, it's an alleged fraud case. Mm -hmm. But how did twenty seven billion naira go missing? The issue is this: you know, when the, the, it it will be on the basis of the argument of his court of his lawyer to get this sum to be his bill. Now you now ask me, what is the lawyer of the accuser doing when the the, the lawyer or uh, the, la the lawyer of the the, the, the post, I mean, what is the lawyer of the prosecutor, prosecutor doing yes. when the accuser lawyer is trying as much as to get this appeal, this frivolous appeal that the president is talking about, to be table before the judge? And the judge are also human. So, in my own understanding, when such appeals come, the prosecutor lawyer is supposed to counter it. That is a grievous offense. By the time this man is let free, or any other person that has been found in such situation, he is let free. How do, is the society see the court? Because yes. most times when court are giving out all these rulers appeals or are joining and the rest of them nigerian feel so sad that corrupt individual are letting free just like you already, I already said earlier now did he even spend the time in the, in the cell or in the prison that's another big question to most answer. Ask, i remember when time the when government was, uh, Bwari, government was prosecuting a lot of pdp members then who have accused of the two billion us dollar uh, security fund that was just being given out to different people by different a lot of them are feigning sicknesses. A lot of them are feigning uh, uh, all manner of things just to escape. And this is what gives Co them... Coming to court in coming crutches court, and, in crutches uh, and uh, neck bandages, bandages and all. Because of the frivolous appeal that will come in and it just will just say, okay, don't worry, because of your sick... Is, but drop your passport. And that will be it. You can't travel, but you, you can, can enjoy the you money you're stolen. You can enjoy the money and go and stay back in your, your lush uh, mansion that you are building with the money. But I just hope that things will change with the new CGN, the KKR, and his warning... As I said here last week, where with uh, Bito, I said it's warning to judges or to the bench or to the public to also go to the bench. The bench are the judges that when people come to the court to come and seek for frivolous appeal, the judge should be very, very sensitive to it. And when it comes to the issue of corruption, the judge should be very sensitive. Although people argue that we should have a tribunal or a new court for court of corruption, although people also argue that ah, we will have that one, a duplication of function. But and the, the right thing to be done is that let us method out justice at the right time. And Nigerians should be happy. Let us see corrupt individuals go to jail for a very long time. Says, we don't want to want corruption. We don't want to turn corruption to capital punishment. Let us give them long-term punishment in the cell or in the prison. It, it, it appears that in the country, corruption sort of pays because hmm. very few people truly ever pay for siphoned or stolen government funds. Definitely. Nobody does that because... The issue is the, it, it will take us. If I don't, I don't, I don't want to dread, I don't want to stress this. It will take us back to the crisis in River State. Yes. Because as I mentioned, I said party politics in Nigeria. Once you become a, an elite choice member of a, party, of a political party in Nigeria, it becomes your your mail ticket. Now all this corruption that we are talking about, who are the people that are engaged in this corruption? Is that political party members, or associate members, or freelance members, or? Uh, Waka Pass members, as I will put in local language, people who just support the political party when the elections are coming. And ask me, it is because of the slot fund of the state that have been looted by this individual, and that through contract, and that through engagement in them in one consultancy or the other. That's why they stole this money, or they told that to you being the head of one government agencies, the money agency, and you stole this money. That's how they, 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 they got all this money. They asked me, 
How did they get those positions? How did they get that privilege to get that money? It's because they belong to a political party. And now when the political party is in power, want to treat the issue. And they, they treat it with gloves and And who appoint the judges? Who have the money to, to, to acquire a son as his lawyer in defense of his case? So, so, certainly, it's the, 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 the same uh, political and ruling class. That's it. So when we now talk about the, when you now, if you want me to reflect on the uh, uh, stomach infrastructure I believe mentioned, all this reflect all to the stomach infrastructure issue. It's interconnected. It's interconnected because people will eat, <laughs> people will survive, and when it comes to, and uh, you are eating more than what you are eating, you're supposed to be eating, then they can't tank it as corruption. Then they take it to court. Then by the time you want to begin to, they take it to court, they actually investigate you, they say, okay, let's how did you get this money? You begin to mention them. You go and mention the godfather or the godmother that appointed you or that you to be in that particular position. So it, be, it becomes complicated. And that's why you see that corrupt individual cannot be sentenced to, to jail for a long time that many Nigerians expected to see. Well, Adefola uh, Reino, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's been a very robust discussion here on the program. Mm. Uh, but I must thank you. It's always uh, wonderful to have you in the studio. Thank Your you deep wealth of uh, political economics exactly. uh, is uh, one that we always appreciate to have here. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Well, it couldn't have been said any better. Ensure that uh, when an agreement is reached in a state... Stick to the agreement, as is the case of River State Governor Sim Simifubara and his godfather, Barista Nyasom uh, Mr. Defolarin here also highlighted and touched on issues of uh, how fair the judiciary is to the political and ruling class, as well as the masses in the country. Now, that's much time will permit us to take on this particular segment of newspaper reviews on Morning Express.